Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 10th chapter of Luke, verses 25 through 37. Listen, hear, and receive God's word. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, it is written in the law. What do you read there? He answered, you shall love your Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity and compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Jesus asked, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? The lawyer responded, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Familiar Bible passages such as the well-known parable of the Good Samaritan are often difficult to breathe new life into. Universally known, the parable of the Good Samaritan is iconic, and we all come with our preconceived ideas about what it means to be a Good Samaritan. Even people who do not attend church regularly know this parable, and some places have even passed Good Samaritan laws that provide legal protection to persons who offer help to another. Very often this parable is reduced to a simplistic moral lesson. Be nice like the Samaritan. Don't be like the priest or the Levites. You know those clergy people who ignored the person injured on the side of the road and hurried by going on about their own business. By the time we reach this passage in the Bible, Jesus has set his face. He's making his way towards Jerusalem to be taken into custody and ultimately crucified. Jesus sends 70 of his followers out ahead to heal the sick, and they return to him with a praise report. Lord, in your name, even demons submit to us. Jesus tells the returning missionaries, do not rejoice because spirits submit. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And then Jesus turns privately to his disciples and says, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, but they did not see it. And to hear what you heard, but did not hear it. Immediately after making this comment to his disciples in private, Jesus is tested by someone who has not eyes to see nor ears to hear. He's approached by this lawyer, a term synonymous with scribe, sorry Mario, <laughs> an expert in the interpretation of Mosaic law. This lawyer slash scribe voluntarily places himself in a ditch by asking a question that he already knows the answer to. Jesus replied by asking a question as well. What is written in the law? To which the lawyer answered with a Shema. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus agrees with him and tells him, do this and you will live. Not willing to let his own answers and Jesus' instructions to be the last word, the lawyer persists, wanting to justify himself. He asks the rhetorical question, and who is my neighbor? The lawyer has fallen right back into the ditch that he intended for Jesus. Challenging Jesus' authority and insight, the lawyer is, is extending the confrontation, asking Jesus to identify or define who qualifies as his neighbor, to place limits on the people to whom he must show love. You know the drill. We love the unborn until they enter into the world and need adequate and just housing, medical care, equal educational opportunities, or the most basic need of nutritious food. Rather than being seen as coming from, some would rather see them as coming from lazy and unmotivated families, unwed mothers. You know, they're a drain on our resources. Why can't those people just get themselves together and become contributing citizens. We love the immigrant while they're working in the fields harvesting the food that we need to eat. But for the love of God and our neat and tidy social structures, we do not, please do not stay in this country beyond the harvest and expect one day to become citizens. We will gladly greet and receive you next year at harvest time. And oh yes, lest we forget the argument that those people are taking jobs away from American citizens. Those are jobs that most Americans do not want or that could not sustain their families on a livable or adequate wage. We love the cultures of people from other countries. We love their food. We embrace some of their traditions, and we even try to imitate their swag, their style of dress, their hair and music and their customs. But this is America, so I want to make sure that all of you speak English, assimilate and become like us, or go back to where you came from. The men and women living in homelessness due to mental illness, lack of income, addiction, or other maladies, many of whom have served our country in the military, why can't they get themselves together and live like normal people? I ask, are any of these people our neighbors? We have fallen into a ditch when we decide that we are the standard by which other people should be judged. We have fallen into a ditch when we allow legislators and judges, supreme or magisterial, to di dictate or legislate unequal and unjust laws against any of God's people or deny the sovereign right for women to make their own choices over their health care and family composition. We have fallen into a ditch when we fail to look beyond a person's life situation and see them as siblings beloved, as fearfully and wonderfully made as being created in the image of God. We have fallen into a ditch when we question, who is my neighbor? Is it people who are just like me? Or does that include people that we consciously or unconsciously exclude, marginalize, or ignore? Jesus chooses once again not to answer the lawyer's question. Instead, Jesus drops some knowledge, sharing a parable about a man traveling on a road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, this road was notoriously dangerous. People knew not to travel there alone. Less than 20 miles in length, the road dropped precipitously about 3,500 feet. It was narrow and rocky. It had twists and turns that made it easy for people intending harm to others to hide. One commentator actually blamed the man who was attacked for being on the road alone. He said he put himself in harm's way. Sounds like a case of blaming the victim to me. I could go on, I could go on a whole tirade about blaming people or victims for the structures, the systems, and the laws that facilitate and aid them in their situation. But what I will say is that 
it, ab it is absolutely unconscionable that in this country, that this country ranks last among 11 other first world countries when it comes to affordable health care. In this land of plenty, too many people are falling further and further behind financially as wages are not keeping up with the cost of living, much less inflation. It is unconscionable that people do not have access to affordable, quality, equitable housing, that some people are forced to make choices between eating, taking their medication, or paying their bills, and far too many people go to bed at night hungry. It is unconscionable that people's right to bear militaristic weapons and arms trumps the rights of children to expect to be safe in their schools or the rights of families to attend a parade or go shopping or see a movie or just walk down the street of any city in this country safely. Oh yes, and our judicial system that does very little to rehabilitate it is used unjustly to metaphorically enslave and warehouse mass numbers of people of color with sentences that far exceed the sentences of people of European descent, even sometimes for the same exact crime. We have fallen into a ditch, people of God, and we seem to not be able to get out. It's interesting to me that Jesus does not identify the ethnicity or the heritage of the man who was robbed, beaten, and lying in the ditch. I find that detail interesting as it denotes that the person in the ditch could be any one of us. It could be anyone, a person of any ethnicity or station or status in life. That man could have been you or me. Some commentators presume that the man is of Jewish descent, making the fact that neither the priest nor the Levite passed him by even more egregious. These two pious men, whatever their reason for not stopping to offer aid to an injured person, to express concern or to assume some risk to render aid is inexcusable. Commentator Amy Jill Levine states, neither Jesus nor Luke gives the priest or the Levite an excuse nor would any excuse be acceptable. They knew Torah's instruction to care for those in trouble. They had their own go and do likewise, but for whatever reason, they passed by the man. End of quote. The priest and the Levite are in their own proverbial ditch, ditch so heavenly bound that they are no earthly good. Then along comes the Samaritan, a person who has been othered and held in contempt by Jewish society, considered of questionable lineage and ethnicity, considered unfaithful to the laws of Moses and to temple worship in J Jerusalem, an enemy of God's chosen people. This man on the outside provides proper, Jew outside of proper Jewish society is moved by compassion and renders aid to the man in the ditch. He transports him to safety, pays for his lodging and care with the promise to pay more when he passes that way again if needed for the injured man's care. A commentator says to hear this par parable in contemporary terms, we should think of ourselves as the persons in the ditch and then ask, is there anyone from any group about whom we'd rather die than acknowledge? Is there any group whose members might rather die than help us? If so, then we know how to find the modern equivalent for the Samaritan. The Samaritan made the conscious choice to get into the ditch, to show compassion, to pull another human out, and to secure him. Jesus tells the lawyer to go, go and do likewise, to get in the ditch and pull others out, disregard any hurt or harm that he might incur, to disregard the laws of cleanliness and purity, to disregard the convention systems, laws, and regulations, and for God's sake to just get in that ditch, to see the others in God's image as siblings in Christ rather than statistics, dregs on, this, on society, damaged or unsalvable, unsalvageable. For Christ's sake, just get in the ditch. When God became incarnate, took on human flesh and walked among us, 
when Jesus became sin and died on the cross to atone for our sins and redeem us, when Holy Spirit came to indwell, lead, died, and comfort us, God literally got into the ditch with humanity and pulled us out. Now we are commanded to go and do the same. In the politics of Jesus, Obrey Hendricks Jr. writes, Jesus simply taught the men and women who heeded his call to put their love for God into practice by loving their neighbors as themselves and that we are to treat our neighbors and their needs as holy. Holy. End of quote. Jesus' clarion call for us is to go out into the community and walk with the least the lost, and the left behind. To make the conscious choice and decision to get dirty. To get dirty. To risk our own safety, comfort, and conventions to pull someone out. Beloved, it is in the ditches where we exemplify and truly live into loving God with our heart our soul, our strength, and our minds, and loving neighbors, as well as ourselves, loving ourselves. We love ourselves when we're dirty and in the ditch. So in the words of Jesus, do this and we shall live. May it be so. Amen.